one of the most common word that we keep hearing while learning IPC is committing an offence. And equally there is one more word that is abetting an offence. Hey guys, welcome to my legal classes. This is Ganesh Pujari and chapter 5 of Indian Penal Code discusses about abetment which covers from section 107 to 120. And here is my first video where I am going to cover two important sections that is section 107 and 108. First, let us have a chart which clearly gives the meaning of abetment. Why to waste time? Let's get into the first slide. The first section of chapter 5 that is section 107 defines what is abetment of a thing. Now it doesn't say abetment as an offense. It discusses about abetment of a thing. Now what does it say? It says if a person instigates or engages or aids. Here any one of the three is sufficient in a conspiracy to commit an act or to omit an act or to do an act or not to do an act or for commission of an act or for an omission of an act. In that case, it is considered as that particular person has committed an abetment. Now, I have given the word meaning in different languages also. In Hindi, it is Bahakana or Bahakav or in Kannada, it is Kumaku. In Telugu, it is Kumaku. Likewise, I have given in Tamil and Malayalam also. Please check whether I have given the right meaning. That is one request because the dictionary, I couldn't find the right meaning sometime. So, please check that one part. As I have already told, abetment itself is not an offence. But if such abetment is done for committing certain offence, then abetment is also an offence. And abetment can be done by a single person to many people and many people to a single person. That is also possible. A single person can instigate, engage or aid many people for an offence. Or many people can instigate one person instigate, engage or aid to commit an offence. That is also possible. Now let us look at few abetment cases or offences where it was held that the abetment was there. The first case law that is Tej Singh versus State of Rajasthan. A woman was getting ready for Sati and men followed her said Sati Mata Ki Jai. Now there was a woman that means one person was getting ready for Sati and many supported her by saying Sati Mata Ki Jai. Now Sati is an offence. Now if people instigate her to commit Sati, in that case they have instigated her to do an offence. That way they become the part of abetment or they have abetted her to commit Sati. That is how it is seen. The second case law that is Queen versus Mohit where A told B that he is going to kill Mr. X. Now B said, do whatever you want. Now here, this is not an abetment by B because he neither instigated A nor engaged him nor aided him. That way, it is not an abetment. The third case law that is Ram Kumar versus state of Himachal Pradesh where a head constable dragged a 19 year old married girl and her husband to the police station and thereafter took her to another room and raped her while the another constable kept an eye on the hapless husband who helplessly heard the screams of his wife. The court found the constable who kept an eye on the husband to have facilitated and thereby abetted the rape by his conduct. Now the first one committed the rape whereas the second one aided by keeping an eye on the husband. Now he has also committed the abetment of the offence that is what held here. So in any offence if someone is instigating or engaging or aiding that person is also considered as part of offence and he will be punished. I hope by now you are very clear with section 107 but let's just go through the provision which says instigate any person to do that thing or engages with one or more other person or persons. Now I have already told it is not singular. It can be plural in both the way. The people who are abetting there also it can be singular or plural. That means a single person or many people. And on the other hand, they can instigate or aid etc. Single person or many persons. 
now that is what you need to remember in any conspiracy for the doing of that thing if an act or illegal omission takes place in pursuance of that conspiracy and in order to do the doing of that thing or intentionally aid by an act of illegal omission the doing of that thing is considered as abatement of a thing now i have already explained very clearly in my previous slide so i don't think there is any further explanation required here with that let's get into section 108 before getting into section 108 if you need one of the simplest illustration for abatement of a thing now mr a is asking mr b to kill mr x and for that he gives some amount of poison to b so that he can put in milk and kill mr x now here a is instigating as well as engaging mr b to kill mr x along with that he is also aiding by giving poison now that can be the simplest illustration you can use with that i am getting into section 108 which discusses about who is a better now in our illustration mr a is the abetter and let us try understand more in detail in section 108 section 108 is very easy but you need to have a lot of patience because it has five important subsections and you have to go through all the subsections to understand it completely that is very important essential while understanding section 108 i have already given a clue that who is a abetter now here is mr a he wants Mr. X to be killed. For that, he is instigating B or engaging B and he provides certain amount of poison to B saying that put it in milk so that X drinks and dies. Now, A is the abetter here. While doing so, he can directly do the commission of an offense. That means he can directly give the poison and ask Mr. B to kill X. That is one way. Or he can also commit an act which will result as an offense. What does he do? Now he knows that B is giving certain important tablet to Mr. X on daily basis. And if B starts skipping few of them, then over a period of time, Mr. X is going to die. Now, what does Mr. A do? He instigates Mr. B to not to give tablets on few days. Now, by doing that act, X is going to die. Now, this is commission of an act. It is not suddenly an offense, but over a period of time, X is going to die. Now, that is the plan. Now, here, A is an abetter. He is instigating Mr. B to commit this offense. And here, B is also aware that what exactly he is committing. So, in that case, he is a person capable by law to commit an offense. B is a person who is capable of law. Now, I am discussing about capable of law. If he is not, like if he is not capable by law to understand what exactly he is doing, that is what we understand under subsection. Now, I hope it is very clear here A has the intention and knowledge and B has the intention and knowledge and together they are committing an offense or committing an act which is converting as an offense over a period of time. In that case, A is the abetter. I hope that is very clear. With that, I am taking you to subsections. The first subsection reads, the abatement of the illegal omission of an act may amount to an offense, although the abetter may not himself be bound to do that act. Here what happens? The abatement of illegal omission of an act. In our example, what we discussed, there is one Mr. A, one Mr. B. B has to give certain amount of tablet to Mr. X on daily basis and A abates Mr. B to not to give tablet. That means that is the illegal omission. It says don't do. In that case what happened? There is an illegal omission of an act and by doing that A becomes the abetter by not allowing to B or by instigating B to not to do the act that he was supposed to do. That is subsection 1. The second subsection discusses about to constitute the offense of abetment. It is not necessary that the act abetted should be committed or that the effect requires it to constitute the offense should be caused. There are two important points. One, the act need not to be committed to consider that abatement has happened. It is not necessary that the act should happen. There is no requirement as such. And the second one is the effect requires it or whatever result anticipated that need not to be happened. Now, if the result is less or more, even then that is considered as abatement. There are two beautiful illustrations here. In the first case, what happens? 
there are two person one mr a and the other one is b now a instigates b to kill mr c now a says go and kill mr c now b says no i will not do that now though b has rejected the offer from a a is guilty of abetting committing murder because he has instigated b so he is guilty of abetting b to commit murder he is punishable that a cannot escape likewise in the next case now a instigate b to murder d and he successfully convinces b that go and kill mr d now b agrees and he stabs mr d fortunately d recovers from the wound he couldn't able to kill d and d got some injury and he recovers however a is guilty of instigating b to commit murder only the punishment will come for the abetment of murder only though it was hurt or grievous hurt the punishment will be for the abetment of committing murder that is very very important aspect which is what discussed under subsection 2 now let's move to the third subsection the subsection 3 is very very important and very very interesting here what happens the first person is capable by law to commit an offense whereas the second person is not maybe a child below 7 years or a lunatic or a person who is having unsoundness of mind or a person who is committing an act under misconception now what happens here that is what discussed under subsection 3 which says it is not necessary that the person abetted should be capable by law of committing an offense or that he should have the same guilty intention or knowledge as that of the abetter or any guilty intention or knowledge it is sufficient that the abetter is capable by law in that case he will get punished the other person who is not capable by law to commit that offense he will not be punished because he is not capable by law but by being capable by law the abetter will be punishable so that is what subsection 3 discusses so it is not essential what the capacity of the person who is got abetted or been instigated or been aided or been engaged it is important what is the capacity of the abetter and if he is capable by law in that case he will get punishment subsection 4 is very interesting and very easy here what happens there is an abetment of an abetment i know that's little bit tough english now let's make it easy imagine there is one mr a and one mr b and these two are friends now a instigates b that his friend that you have to instigate your friend mr c to kill mr z now the problem with a is he cannot directly instigate mr c because he is not his friend but he knows if he able to instigate mr b then mr b can instigate mr c because b and c are friends so what does a do a calls mr b and ask him to instigate mr c to murder z now a instigated b and then b instigate mr c and then c murders z now here both a and b are punishable for committing abetment it is what says the abetment of an offense being an offense the abetment of such an abetment is also an offense it looks little tricky but it's very easy so one person abetting the another to abet the third person now here both of them have committed abetment that is very important aspect we need to remember the last sub section that is sub section 5 discusses about the awareness among the members who are participated in a particular abetment it says it is not necessary to the commission of the offense of abetment by conspiracy that the abetter should concert the offense with the person who commits it it is sufficient if he engages in the conspiracy in pursuance of which the offense is committed now let us try understand this with an illustration here in this story there are four people one mr a the other one is b the third one is c and the fourth one is z now a want to kill mr z so he discusses with b that i want to kill mr z for that i need certain amount of poison 
Now, what does B do? He says, I know a person who has poison. So he directly goes to C and says that we want to kill Mr. Z. For that, we need certain amount of poison. Here, B explained everything else except that A is the person who is going to put the poison. Now, C goes and brings the poison and gives it to B. Now, here C is knowing that they are going to kill Mr. Z. Now, B takes the poison and gives it to A and A administers the same and finally Z dies. Now here, though C is not aware that A is the person who is going to put the poison, he is also punishable. It is not necessary that every one of them has the same level of awareness. They need to have the awareness that this is the offense that they are going to commit. In that case, if there is no misconception, in that case, A, B and C all will be punishable. That is what discussed under subsection 5. Then comes amendment section that is section 108A which discusses about abatement in India of offences outside India. Now to understand this particular section we need to know what is India under IPC which is defined under section 18 as the territory excluding Jammu Kashmir. Now remember with the episode of article 370 and 35UA during 2019 the Indian government has declared during February March 2020 that the Indian Penal Code is applicable in Jammu Kashmir also. That way it replaces the Ranbir Penal Code. That is very important. So the act is applicable to Jammu Kashmir also. When we are understanding India, we need to keep Jammu Kashmir also in our mind. Now what happens here, if a person from India abets a foreigner to commit an offence, in that case the person from India will be punished for that abatement which is what given in the illustration saying that A in India instigates B a foreigner in Goa to commit a murder in Goa here A is guilty of abetting murder. Hope that is very clear with that I am concluding this particular video. In my next video I will start discussing on the punishment provisions till then please subscribe my channel please like share and comment my videos all the very best for whatsoever purpose you are watching my channel and thanks again.